and welcome to another beer log. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we did a video with Hopinion slash uh, the Beer O'Clock Show. Beer O'Clock Show, yes. In which we did a blind taste test comparing hazy and clear beer. And what we learned was that we learned nothing. Pretty much. I think uh, it was a fun experiment, yeah, for sure. Goes well, lovely guys. Uh, but in terms of the haziness, what it adds. I, it was inconclusive. Yeah, we didn't learn that much, but as we went away and we thought about it for a couple of weeks, and obviously their podcast went live, which you can still watch, there's yeah. a link below. Check it out. We started drawing our own conclusions from what we saw and what we tasted. Yes. And well, what, not what we saw, because, well, we, we were blindfolded. Well, I could see right. everything, Yeah, as um, always. So the first thing we learned is that haze is obvious in the oh, yeah. aroma and in the, the mouthfeel. You don't need to see it to know that it's there, that it's yeah. present. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's like, the, like the Jedi Force, <laughs> almost. It's there, isn't it? It's there even you if you can't it. see it. You can feel it if you don't need to see it. Yeah. And you can use it. You can use it. You can use the haze. I think the thing that is missing in the haze versus clear debate is about there's good haze and there's bad haze. Exactly. There is the light side of the force and, and there's the, the dark, dark side, side of the force. Oh. It's not tortured yet, not yet but it's getting we're, there. We're getting there. Um, so there are lots of people who think that haze is objectively bad, that beer shouldn't be hazy. Yeah. To which I would say, yeah. Hefeweiss. Exactly, exactly. I mean, the Germans. Yeah, they have the Reinheitsgebot. They have the strictest that, laws on what you can even call beer. Thing. Yeah. Like that thing, you know? And they they're fine with about. hazy beer. So exactly. why is anyone slagging anyone off for producing hazy beer? Don't know. Cask beer, uh, right? Cask beer, yeah, exactly. Well, the thing with cask is... You know, sometimes a lot of people, if they get a cask and it's hazy, they might think it's an imperfection. Yeah, or it's uh, not ready. Or it hasn't settled, it's not ready. But you should always ask the barman, is it supposed to be hazy? Because yeah. it might be. It might be. Or you should try it yourself. And if you think it's delicious, then who cares? Then does it matter? Yeah. No. So there, there's no reason why a beer should be clear, right? And if it affects the flavour, then maybe it should be clear. If it affects the flavour in a good way, then yeah. maybe... It should be hazy. It's like, you know, people like multi beers. Some people like really hoppy beers. It's, what other kinds of beer are there? All kinds of beers, Johnny. <laughs> Sour beers. Sour beers. Yeasty Salty beers. beers. Yeah. Yeasty beers. There was, there was a thing this I read. This is like the full bodied beer, you know? It's yeah. like the mouthfeel. The exactly. Parts. So if, it, if you look at Hefeweiss, it adds body. Yeah. And it adds, or, or the processes exactly. that result in that haze add yeasty aromas, add esters, Amazing. that banana, that clove thing, which comes from the yeast. What is wrong with us doing that in a different style? We should be defining styles for like when you're, when you're judging beer, but we don't need to define a style if it's going to add something. So if you're going to use a yeasty ester that adds peaches to a hop regime that adds clementines, doesn't that sound like a wonderful hop salad? It sounds like an amazing party in my yeah. mouth, yeah. potentially. So it has its place. Haze doesn't always add to something, and we found that in some of those beers that we drank that weren't so brilliantly made, they didn't add a lot or they distracted yes but haze can be brilliant and you know exactly. i mean we're drinking a kernel uh which which basically started the whole london murk hashtag because mm. we live through hashtags now um this one's actually surprisingly bright, bright for a kernel i can almost see uh, the camera through it you could, you could hold up <laughs> you can see the two fingers to people who hate haze um and that, it's always been hazy and it's always been delicious and it's not necessarily part of kernel's flavor profile it's no. not adding body or anything but the sheer amount of hops is what's causing that and the lack of filtration of course and, and, who, and it's brilliant you and can say that's a bad thing yeah if when somebody it tastes that good yeah if somebody turned away that at a bar they're being a moron exactly so i guess what we proved in that video is that it's hard to brew something hazy yes that's or the other ester based thing. exactly that is good very, exactly. very hard. And that's why I've never had a Hefeweiss outside of Bavaria that I've loved. Not one. Well, as a teenager, I used to drink a lot of Hefeweiss in, in Bromley. Yeah, but which Hefeweiss? Oh, it's Johnny. I'm an old man now. It's I a bet, long time ago. I bet yeah. it was Bavarian, though. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, I yeah, bet yeah, it was yeah. Bavarian. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, regionally, yeah. 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 And totally. it's the same. Like, in New England, it used to be that no one else could make hazy beer. And now now lots of people can. You know, Cloudwater have nailed it. Monkish, yeah. obviously, on, on, on the East Coast. Exactly. So haze can be a wonderful, wonderful thing in a beer. But the other thing that we did learn... Um, was, was that actually at the end of the day when it comes to an IPA and this should this is my definition of IPA yes. it's the hops the hops are what matters the hop most forward. and so the ones that scored the best in that tasting was, were the ones that had a big hop profile and it was the Alesmith beer that had a little bit of hop haze like yeah. through sheer amount of hop and through the temperature it served at 
and that was the best beer so even even when it's almost clear you can still have the most incredibly rich full flavored full bodied beers yes. so all those people that are also drink a really hazy beer and criticize clear beers thinking they're not going to get the flavor from it i call bullshit it always goes back to the skill of the brewer doesn't it really? yeah and the and intention of the brewer. The intention of the brewer, how the beer is being treated. And you put it really well before we went on camera about how it's just it's just another facet of brewing. Exactly. So like some people want bitterness, some people want uh, sourness, some people want full body, I know some I people do. want soft bitterness. You want a full body? I'm a full body kind of man. Well on that bombshell, <laughs> no wait, I'm not Jeremy Clarkson. So the reason we made this follow-up video is because we want to make sure that you realise that our conclusion is that you should be drinking with your mouth and not, well, mouth and nose, not your eyes. Exactly. So it's not about how murky it is or how unmurky it is. It's about how good it tastes and how good it smells yeah. at the end of the day. Absolutely. And it shouldn't, shouldn't have to go beyond that. So don't be prejudiced. Exactly. Drink the taste rainbow. Drink the beer rainbow. <laughs> don't sue us, Skittles. Uh, and cheers to Hazy and Clear. Mine's a murk. Did you say mine's a murk? I like it. That's a t-shirt slogan right there. Mine's a <laughs>